Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with the Heritage Pride Urban Homestead and uh, I'm back to bring you a series of videos or working on the series of videos on the uh, aquaponics grow towers. Now I'll go ahead and tell you, uh, I think we're going to restart um, this video so um, or this series. I've already recorded like five aquaponics towers videos and um, I just I, I keep thinking about um, I don't want to steer people in the wrong direction. I don't want to. I don't want to pull any wool over your eyes or or make you think that something works when it doesn't. And so, um, these other videos were the initial build. It was the initial steps, um, and I took you from start to finish um, through the entire build. And uh, I ran into some problems with the towers. And uh, you know, I kind of expected to run into a couple of things here and there. Um, it's kind of part of research and development and while um, there have been a couple of people on YouTube that did this same kind of growth tower uh, none of them really discussed issues that really came with them um, as such as you know water uh, water uh, leaking out of the, the the cups and and you know water supply issues and, and just different things um, even distribution of the water on the roots and, and stuff like that. So these are all problems that I ran into during the initial setup of the towers. And the build, as far as the towers go, the build is about the same. Um, but for the most part, uh, a lot of the little, there's little things that have changed. And so I don't want to put those videos up that I did on the grow towers and uh, end up with people spending the money and building the towers as we go through the videos just to find out that in video six I'm changing the entire thing and now you have to take all your towers apart and redo it so I don't want to do that so I'm gonna start from scratch uh, video one is already up um, and video one I think I just kinda talk about the um, basic uh, idea of vertical gardening uh, versus uh, horizontal gardening and so that one will stay up but video two um, which will be this video we will actually start from scratch making our grow tower um, in the uh, original video two was the uh, the making of the actual tower so in this video and that's what we'll do. We'll make a tower. So excuse the mess on my workbench here, my makeshift workbench. Um, I've been working on these things to get them perfect. Uh, you know, when you build these, for me, this is not a marketing thing. It's not something that I'm going to put online and sell or, or anything like that. But I've talked to you guys a little bit about the plan in the future as far as uh, going small-scale commercial and that involves um, a, a lot more of whatever I'm working on um, it involves a lot more of it so for instance in my little greenhouse here on the homestead I've got eight slots for grow towers and the grow towers are only about you know just over three feet long just shy of four feet tall and um, you know if I'm if I have to spend 30 or 40 bucks figuring out how to make these towers work properly then that's one thing but on a bigger scale we're talking a hundred hundred and fifty grow towers in our greenhouse our commercial greenhouse I need to keep the cost of these towers as low as possible but also make them as reliable as possible I don't want to have to do any maintenance I want to make them easily functionable, easy to disassemble, easy to clean, easy to dismount from the system. All of those things, I need to make them easy, and I need to, but I still need to keep the cost down. Zip grow towers, 70, 80, 90, 100 bucks a piece. These, right now, about $24 a piece, um, up to 10 feet long. And then over 10 feet, then, you know, well, 10 feet's about as tall as you would do. So any length from a foot to 10 foot would be about 24 bucks a piece. 
So that's pretty good, I think. That's, you know, that's a, a third, if not less, of what the zip grows cost. And that's our, that's our goal, is to, stay, is to stay as cheap as possible. Um, so anyway, in this video we'll go ahead and take our raw PVC pipe and turn it into the um, net cut, or the slots for our actual tubes for our towers. So uh, let's get started. All right, guys. So, to make your uh, your tube for your to have your pockets uh, for your net cups, we're shooting for two inch net cups. We want we want to put two inch net cups in. So to do that, um, you got to have a piece of PVC pipe. And this is four inch Schedule Twenty uh, PVC pipe. It's also known as drain waste vent. Uh, you can use it for irrigation. It's a sewer. It's just a cheaper sewer pipe. Now, four-inch pipe, you can use it. It's going to take a lot more heat, a lot more forming, a lot more work, and it's super expensive. This stuff is much cheaper, and it'll hold up just as good for what we're doing. So this is a sewer pipe, Schedule 20, four-inch. Uh, what I've done is I cut it to length, and your length is going to be whatever your for whatever your application is. Um, this stuff usually comes more, most commonly in 10 foot sticks. Um, so I just cut it to the length that I'm going to need. Um, now, what I did was I put a mark uh, on both ends of the pipe, drew me a straight line, and then I offset, uh, I think, four inches here or something like that. And I made me a mark, and then I went eight inches, mark, eight inch on center, all the way down through here. And then I took a hacksaw and just cut a slit in it about as deep as the hacksaw blade is. Um, so it's uh, as simple as that. And I showed you know all of that on the other video, but uh, I don't have a hacksaw in here right now to show you. But basically when you lay your hacksaw in there, um, you cut until it's to the top. The blade, the top of the blade is just at the uh, top of the PVC pipe there. So make your cuts. And then rotate your pipe four inches, put another mark, so four inches from here to here, and put another mark, both ends of it, draw you a straight line, and then offset your net cups. Um, and that way your net cups are staggered, they're not all in a line all the way down through there. And uh, that's important to have them staggered, so just stagger your net cups. Uh, once you get that done, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a heat gun. You can use a hair dryer. It takes forever. Um, you can use a, a propane torch or a butane torch. It'll burn your. It could burn your plastic. The best thing to use is just a heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, you can pick them up for like 20 bucks, and they're a really cool tool to have um, for a lot of stuff. But heat gun works really well. So you'll need a heat gun. And then you will also need some form of uh, jig to make your form with. And in this case, what I used was a table leg. Uh, I went to Lowe's and I found a replacement table leg. And I cut it off. And I used my caliber and marked two inches because that's the diameter that we need for our neck cups is two inches. So I marked two inches, put a mark on it. And then when I slide it, once I heat everything up and slide it in, I push it up to the two inch mark. And that will give me a perfectly round two inch circle with minimal fabricating to make that work. Now you can also use a Coke bottle and stuff like that, a glass bottle. Wine bottle, I've seen that done. But this works really good. Um, and it was like four bucks for the table leg. So I just cut it off and made it more convenient for me to use for this. And that's pretty much all you need. So uh, let's get cracking. All right, so to get started, what we'll do is just take our heat gun, turn it on, and start heating up the pot. Now you don't want to leave it on one spot too long, but you want to make sure that it's nice and soft. Um, and heat a good area on both sides of it. Don't just heat the main cut area there. You want to heat uh, all the way up so that you get a good form on it. Once the pipe starts to heat up, the first one always takes the longest. Once the pipe gets nice and warm um, from heating the first couple, it'll go a lot faster. But the first one, just be patient. It takes a little while to get it nice and warm. 
to where it's pliable enough to uh, to do something with. It. All right, guys. So I just finished up uh, heating up and making our pockets in our in our grow tube or grow tower, and uh, you can see they came out pretty nice. And it works out perfect to drop a uh, two-inch net cup in there. And if I had one sitting here, I would show you, but I don't think I do. But anyway, two-inch net cup just drops right in in these little uh, these little slots here. So that's convenient because I can start plants in uh, the uh, the uh, hydroponic seed starter in the two inch net cups. And when the roots start to form in that seed starter, uh, they start to grow out of the, the rock wool cube into the net cup and then through the net cup into the water. If you try to pull that rock wool cube out and transplant that into another grow cup, uh, or net cup, then you're going to have problems with your roots breaking off or tearing off or whatever. The root system is really fragile at, at first. So you've got to uh, keep that uh, intact when you transplant. So by using two inch net cups in my seed starter, then I can just pull those net cups, rock wool cube roots, plant and all out and drop it right into the grow tower. So it works out really well. Um, and I like it. Uh, so far, now that I've done the research and I've been growing with them for a little while now, um, this is probably one of my favorite designs out there. So anyway, it, it takes a few minutes to, to make. Uh, it takes you about 15, 20 minutes to make one tube. Um, the, and if it's longer, you know, obviously it'll take you a little bit longer than that. But it's just a really cool way to uh, make a grow tower on the cheap with just a piece of PVC pipe a uh, table leg <laughs> and a heat gun so anyway guys in uh, that'll be it for this video uh, segment in the next video in video three what we'll do is start making the components for the top and the bottom of the grow tower and uh, in that video I will also show you the original design and explain to you why that design didn't work and what we had issues with and uh, you can see the the new design um, the original grow tower I had down to about uh, 10 to 12 dollars a piece and uh, just tried to make them on the too cheap I guess so anyway we ran into some issues and it takes a little bit more to make it work perfectly and still be able to uh, uh, eliminate as much evaporation and uh, temperature exchange, thermal exchange as possible. So anyway guys, I said that's it for this video. Don't forget to check out the suggested videos up here if uh, you want to keep up with the progress of this, um, this series or our homestead or anything like that. Click on the little box right here. That'll uh, take you back to our channel. You can check out our videos and all that good stuff. Also, always check in the description below. Uh, sometimes I put links to cool things in there as well as you will find our Instagram handle and my Facebook uh, link to my Facebook channel uh, or Facebook page um, and you can uh, friend me on there or follow me on Instagram a lot of times I post pictures of stuff going on around the homestead before the videos even pop up on YouTube um, grow towers are a good example of that um, so anyway guys um, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, pop them in the comments section below. Until next time, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe, and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later.